Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief is just a bad film. It pretty much killed any hope of there being an expanded universe for the Percy Jackson books. I mean, when you stray this far from the source material, it's hard to please really anyone. It feels like a weird removed cousin from the books, and it didn't really intrigue casual fans either. It's really disappointing because you can see people tried their hardest here, and there are things that worked, like Logan Lerman in the main role. Either way, we are gonna be getting that Disney Plus original series of the books, and hopefully one that is more true to that original storyline, the characters, and their ages. Now, this is the third episode in a series that I've been doing where I've been recasting Percy Jackson and the characters for that Disney Plus series. I've made my way through the three main characters as well as through the three big gods. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on the rest of the recastings within the Percy Jackson Olympian series. And if you're liking what I'm doing, please click that like button. It really does support the channel, so I appreciate that. From here on forward, we're gonna be tackling book by book and each character that are prevalent in each book. It may not be the book that they first appeared in, rather the one that they were most important in. For instance, Clarice is in The Lightning Thief, but she has a much more active role in Sea of Monsters. But before we get started today, I wanna to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Now Squarespace helps you build a website. It's super easy with the help of templates and designs to get you started, but if you're looking to dive even deeper, it allows you to completely customize to help achieve that look or desire for your brand. Squarespace's designs actually automatically optimize for your mobile, tablet, or computer browsing, meaning your website is easy to navigate and looks great no matter the device the person is using. I've been using it to create a website of my own, and I've been diving into getting a domain, which is super simple, has no hidden costs or price changes. So head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Seeker to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. But for today's casting, we are taking on some of the most prominent characters within Percy Jackson. Today we're casting Ares, Luke, Mr. D, Chiron, Medusa, Sally Jackson, and Gabe. So let's recast Percy Jackson and the Olympians. First up, we have Ares, the god that was very shortchanged in the original movie. He was straight up left out of the story, when in the books he's actually a pretty major player and a villain. Now, Ares should be forceful, proud, and I've always felt like Ares is more of a force of nature, uncompromising, unwilling to bend. He should almost be animalistic in his ways. As for an actor, I think there are some really good choices out there, like John Bernthal I think would be great for this, but I gave this slight edge and I end up choosing Tom Hardy instead. I think he can play a role like this with that toxic masculinity, but I feel like he just bring a little bit more nuance. He has shown in many roles he can play vicious, that animal-like, but with depth and maturity. The things I did in Africa make your transactions look paltry. I think he can communicate that all on screen, as well as being controlled by Kronos in his dreams. I really can see Tom Hardy here, and I think he'd nail this one. So Tom Hardy as Ares. Next up we have Chiron, the centaur who looks after Camp Half-Blood and its students. He is very protective of them. Now the most important thing with Chiron is that feeling, that fatherly, overlooking, there to help and comfort. He is patient and kind and really supportive. Now the official art for the books is not exactly how I pictured this character. And although I think Pierce Brosnan actually did a great job, I don't think his looks exactly lined up what I pictured either. He's described in the books as having thinning hair, bushy eyebrows, and a beard as well as intense brown eyes. I don't know why, but I've always pictured an older version of this character. Definitely older than what the art looks like. Someone who has more wisdom and has seen lifetimes go by. Now this may be a personal thing, but I've always felt like Chiron has had more of an air of mystery to him. Him training Achilles, as well as being the son of Kronos, alludes to a backstory that we never really see. I mean, he's stepbrothers with the big three. So how did he end up in Camp Half-Blood? I need someone who can bring the gravitas that Chiron needs, but that calm and understanding nature. I really like Jude Law for this, but unfortunately he's been cast as young Dumbledore, and I think it just might be a little bit too similar. So I end up going a little bit older, and I end up going with Timothy Dalton, who of course was Bond in the past, so it has that nice link to Pierce Brosnan, but his work in Doom Patrol shows just a touch of what his Chiron would be. Not this time. It's mine. She's perfectly safe under my care. He has that calm and understanding nature, but he almost has that little bit of an ominous feeling, which I think would play well with the mystery of the character. I think he also looks the part, being older, thinning, and collected in his ways. So Timothy Dalton as Chiron. 
Next up, we have Sally Jackson. Not the flashiest character in the series, but definitely one that is important. She should be incredibly kind and loving, but you can also see that little bit of a rebellious streak in her, especially with her falling in love with Luke Evans Poseidon in her youth. She should be beautiful, but be very mentally strong. I mean, she had to deal with Gabe for nearly a decade. I end up going with Linda Cardinelli, who is best known for being Hawkeye's wife in Age of Ultron. She's beautiful and perfect for an age like this, and she does a great job of showing strength while still being vulnerable. She also has shown in Freaks and Geeks in the past that she has that little bit of a rebellious side, especially in her youth, that I think works well with the character too. But she's got that little bit of playfulness, that strength, as well as that loving feeling that is most important for Sally. But I see those guys, those gods. You don't think they need me? I think they do, which is a lot scarier. So Linda Cardinelli as Sally Jackson. Next up we have Gabe. He was played by Joe Pantoliano, who plays it very big, but you can definitely buy into this character being very disgusting and vile as he is in the books. Someone you'd question why Sally is even giving them the time of day. Now Gabe is a tough character to nail without being too over the top. I want an actor who feels like they can naturally be abusive while being disgusting. I went with an actor who can turn this character from a joke to a real life threat. That man is Vincent D'Onofrio. He has shown he can play dark and disturbed and fueled by anger in Daredevil. And he also played one of the most disgusting creatures I've ever seen on screen in Men in Black. Give me sugar. You can also see him being a little bit more of a grounded slime ball in Jurassic World. This is happening with or without you. I think he'd bring this character that could be cringy, really rooted in reality, and really help you understand what Sally put herself through just for her son. I think he'd have a grounded level performance, which brings that abuse and disgustingness very close to home. So Vincent D'Onofrio as Gabe. Next up we have Mr. D, the camp director who definitely does not want to be there. Now every single fan cast of Percy Jackson knows and probably believes there are only two actors in the world that can play Mr. D, Jack Black or Danny DeVito. And honestly, I can see why. I think Danny would be great if he was younger, and I think Jack Black would nail the role. But honestly, it's kind of boring to just go with the two most obvious choices that you've seen everywhere. So rather, I went looking for another actor, and one that could fit the character maybe even better than the two names I previously mentioned. I've always seen Mr. D as a person who lacks interest and effort. He mispronounces names out of laziness and to belittle the people. I want that apathy, someone who is constantly in a bad mood. Although Stanley Tucci was great in this role, I think he played it with a little bit too much of a fun-loving nature. I want to see that bad mood shining through. I end up going with Mark Shepard, who I think would be incredible. He's best known for his work in Supernatural, but it's in Doom Patrol again. But we see a little bit of his version of what Mr. D could look like. He plays Kip where he's inconvenienced and annoyed to save the world. So, what's your plan? Is zap everything that comes through that door? Nobody's rooting harder for you than I. But if your science and my whatever it is that I do don't work, we're gonna have to re-examine our options. He looks exactly how I pictured the character, and he brings that level of disdain and annoyance that feels very true and not like acting whatsoever. So Mark Shepard as Mr. D. Next up we have Medusa, or Auntie Anne. Now, I don't know why, but I hated Uma Thurman in this role. She just does not work. She feels off-putting and honestly cringy. I'd rather go with an actress who feels more rooted in a role like this. Someone who can come off as more natural and complex, especially in a role like this. Uma Thurman felt like a bad parody. Considering there's not much screen time and not a lot of character growth, we need to have an actor who can embody this and really translate everything in just a matter of moments. That's why I went with Eva Green, who seems to be somewhat of a go-to for darker female roles, but it's in a role like this where you have to get the character in mere seconds that she would nail it. She can play it with darkness and almost a sensualness that I feel like would scream Medusa. <laughs> now that brings me pleasure, the thought of you pining away for me. Forsaking family and love for the promise of a deeper ecstasy. She wouldn't do her best version of Medusa. She would act into her strengths and really lean into what makes her amazing as an actress. We wouldn't see a parody here. We'd see a true performance that would work really well with the character. So Eva Green as Medusa. Lastly, we have Luke. Now Luke in the movies, in my opinion, was the worst handled character. From the get-go, 
he just seems evil. You know he's not a helping hand in the film, and he's played with almost a cynicism, which really didn't come across for me in the books. I really like in the first book that Luke isn't revealed until the very end that he's the villain. He isn't someone that should stick out, and definitely not be what the movies made him out to be. Now Luke, unlike our main three characters in the first book, is 19 years old. He should pretty much be a grown man. He should be attractive and much more personal than the movies would lead you to believe. I want an actor who seems like they're part of Camp Half-Blood, and they aren't sticking out as an evil person from the beginning. I think we need someone with that face and that demeanor. We need to see him as a friend and someone we can trust from the very beginning, but also someone that can grow. I end up going with Mitchell Hope, who definitely has the look for Luke, but he also has that personality that I want to attach to the first film. Now, he does have limited screen credits. He's most known for The Descendants, as well as Let It Snow, but he actually shows he can act. He brings a lot of fun to those roles, but I think he actually has the talent to go dark and really make a complex Luke here. God, since when did you get so sensitive? Okay, are you mad about JP? Why would I be mad about JP? Are you jealous? Yeah, yeah, Angie. I'm jealous of, of JP. I'm jealous of the enlightened, broomball playing, meditating college boy. So Mitchell Hope as Luke. So there is Percy Jackson in The Lightning Thief. We will be getting to see of Monsters next, so please subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Please comment below letting me know your choices for these roles. I really love reading them. As always though, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.